Don't just sit there gloating. Put your word down. What's that? What's that? B U M bum. <laughs> Two letters score, double word score. That's uh, that's sixteen and fourteen thirty. What filthy minds you have got? What's wrong with that? It's vulgar. That's what's wrong with it. Honestly, this is supposed to be an erudite game calculated to increase one's word power. I mean, just look at that board. It's disgusting. <laughs> There's not one word you put down that can be used in decent company. <laughs> There's not one word of more than four letters. <laughs> that board is nothing more than a display of calculated filth. Yeah, but they still count, don't they? No, they don't. <laughs> yes, they do. If they're in the dictionary, they count, and buns in the dictionary. <laughs> Your goal. I'm not so sure that bum is in the dictionary. I mean, you don't think all them professors up at Oxford is going to waste their time discussing the merits and the meanings of the word bum. <laughs> they don't use dirty words like that. My bum's not dirty. <laughs> I mean, my bum is the American for tramp. Ha, ha, well, that's where I got you. That's where I got you. Because you're not allowed to use colloquialisms or slang. All right. I'll stick to me English bum. <laughs> which is the part of your anatomy that swells out the back of your trousers. <laughs> your go. Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, how can you compete with this sort of thing? If I'd have thought this game was going to degenerate into a mere catalogue of crudities, I would never have started it in the first place. You're just not because I'm winning. Oh, well, you don't care what sort of words you put down. That's not difficult, is it? I mean, look, look, look at the difference in, in the quality of my words and your words. Well, at least I'm having a go at keeping the tone up. Yeah, but you're not winning, are you? And that's what it's all about, mate. You got an S? Supposing I have. Well, you could stick it on the end of my bum and make it bum. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not if you don't, mate. <laughs> well, at least I can clean your word up. B U M bum, your word. B U M P S bum, piss, my word. That's a three and one to three and three and one to eleven. Isn't that lovely? Bumps. That S has let me in nice. S O D sod. Simple <laughs> letter. Uh, three, O oh, one, D two, three, six all together. I'm not allowing sod. Why not? Nothing wrong with that. Piece of turf. Shakespeare uses it. I don't care if Barbara Cartland uses it. <laughs> That's not the way you meant it. You meant it as a swear word. You always mean them as swear words. Because you are dirty and crude and, and horrible. You're a go. I can't go. I can see one. I'm not interested. Have you got a blank? I'm not telling you. You can make it a K and stick it on the end no! of the end, you know. <laughs> I will not stoop to using obscenities. Besides, you've already used it. You can't go, can you? I didn't say that. I think I shall change all of my letters. You can't, there are only four left. I shall change three of them then. Oh, I've 
if I was Polish, I suppose I could have a stab at it. Jigwigigigs. <laughs> you can't go, can you? No, I can't. I can. C R U M. What, what's that? Crumb. Crumb? <laughs> what you get in bed when you've been eating biscuits? <laughs> you, you don't spell it like that. Don't you? There's a B on the end of it. Is there? Well, no wonder you keep putting down filthy words. They're the only ones you can spell. <laughs> That's a smart go. No, no, well, I think I can still go. Uh, what's that word you got there? Well, that, that's pet. Pet. C R U M P E T. <laughs> Crumpet. <laughs> Which you also get in bed. <laughs> uh, it's in, 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 that's 13. Triple letter, double word. That's uh, 29 altogether. That's. Um, 523 I've got and, and 56 to you. <laughs> well, you won't make anything out of them. There's those two K's and an N's I just threw away. Knickers! <laughs> That's 50 for me for getting rid of all my letters. And that's, uh, that's 535 points I've won by. At a penny a point, that's five pounds 35 new pence show me. <laughs> Try another game? No. It's a good game, isn't it? It is, when it's played properly. Not when it's played by dirty old men like you. <laughs> Who's that? Don't stop with me. Every time there's a knock on the door, you say, Who's that? <laughs> That's a very annoying habit you've got. I mean, how do I don't know what it is? I mean, I mean, I've got x ray eyes. I shall go to the door. I shall open it. If it's got anything remotely to do with you, I shall tell you who it is. Well, you don't open it, nobody will know, will they? It's all right, all right. Don't knock the bleeding door down. <laughs> oh, hello, Vicar. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Scepter. Inclement weather, is it not? Oh, yes. It's most inclement. Yes. It is on nights like these that one's thoughts go out to our sailors and fishermen. Yes. Yes, indeed. It must be very empty out there. <laughs> I wouldn't fancy it. Nor I, indeed, no. Funny how we all take a bit of fish for granted, don't we? Oh, we do, we do. Yes, indeed we do. Yeah. Hardly a thought to be spare for those brave souls. Quite, quite. How much do you want? Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I thought you was collecting. Oh, goodness me, no. Oh, you better come inside then. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's most kind of you. Who was it? The vicar. Oh, God, is he on the ear all again? <laughs> He knows you're here. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> uh, he'd like to go inside. Thank you very much. He's had two bob already off me this year. He must think we're made of money. For... <laughs> oh, gold. <laughs> Hello, Vicar. I, I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> I'm in your suit. Oh, it's a nice one, isn't it? It's not one of ours, is it? I beg your pardon? You didn't get it out of that sack full we sent you for Bangladesh. Father, the vicar is hardly likely to go nicking clothes intended for refugees. No, I didn't mean anything. I wouldn't blame him if he did. I mean, his need is as great as theirs. He hasn't got much. I mean... Uh, Father, would you like to go and make a cup of tea? It's most inclement out. Oh, you don't want tea, vicar. You want something to warm you up? There's a nice little drop of gold watch. Thank you very much. Well, God bless you and the devil miss you. <laughs> Don't give me one, will you? <laughs> We'd like to sit down for a couple of Oh, thank you. Oh, Scrabble, my favourite game. You've just finished, I see. <laughs> High standard. We haven't got the command of words like what you have got. 
Uh, perhaps you would both like to come round to the vicarage one evening. My wife is a very keen player. We could make up a foursome. Oh, I'd like that. I don't, know, I don't think that's a, a very good idea. You'd be much too good for us. You'd crucify us. I mean... <laughs> How's your knees? <laughs> oh, greatly improved, thank you. The vicar's had a touch of housemaid's knee. Has he? Oh, I'm sorry. An occupational hazard, I'm afraid. One has to spend a great deal of time kneeling in my game. <laughs> you want to get your missus to get you some pads put up in the chaises. All she wants is one of her padded bras, cut it in two and strap it around your knees. It fits lovely. <laughs> I knew a carpet layer once swore by them and he reckoned the that... Father, I'm sure that the vicar is more than capable of making his own medical arrangements without laying himself open to a charge of transvestism. <laughs> Would you like to go and put the blanket on the horse and go to bed? No. I want to talk to the vicar. Then kindly moderate your language. Uh, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit? Uh, if it is about me not uh, coming to church, I feel I have made my position quite clear about that in the past. Whilst I hold nothing against you personally, intellectually, I am, like Bertrand Russell before me, a humanist. Consequently, I cannot subscribe to the Christian ethos or dogma. Yes, yes, I remember our conversation that evening very well. Very cogently reasoned, I thought. Oh. <laughs> I, I remember your argument that Pascal and Calvin were, uh, uh Burks, I think you said. <laughs> It made a great impression on my wife. Did I say that? I'm, I'm most terribly sorry. Not at all. One often gets carried away in a theological discussion. Here, yeah, but I should not have used language like that. Look, but please, uh, explain to your wife that I was a little bit het up and your hospitality was on the generous side. And I was a wee bit Brahms and Liszt. <laughs> Brahms and Liszt. I shall tell her. Uh, no, Mr. Steptoe, the reason for my visit is quite different. Uh, frankly, I have come to ask a favour of you. Oh, anything. Please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> As you may know, this week we are celebrating the centenary of our church. Go away. Yes, 100 years of bringing the good word to the people of Shepherd's Bush. Yes, a great deal has changed since then. Yeah, you have a lot of competition from the Muslims now, don't you? <laughs> well, it's true. They were pouring out of that converted cinema last week, like a bus garage it was. I don't regard it as competition. All the great religions of the world are there for the glory of God. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Are ah, there? Well, I wish he'd put up a few round here. The hours and conditions are <laughs> diabolical. Yes, I am cognizant of the problem. However... Yes, do go on, Vicar. So we have decided to publish a special centenary edition of our parish magazine. Mm, mm, mm. What a good idea. And I should be glad of any contributions that I can get. I thought so. How much you want? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean articles. Articles for inclusion. My wife I thought it would be rather nice if we had articles about some of the more exotic trades and professions that have been carried on in the parish throughout the years. Oh, we've had them round here. That place next door used to be a right old knocking yes, shop. Yes, of <laughs> We did used to get a lot of noise from there. It was a wheelwright. <laughs> ah. And as you are one of the oldest established firms in the area, we wondered uh, whether one of you would care to write about the history of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush. I should be delighted to do it. So would I. Uh, Father, I think I'd better write it. Oh, I know more than you do. I oh, know you don't. Sarge, you can't write as well as I can. I'm, I'm, I mean, I was, I was always top of my class in composition. You know that. I always used to get nine out of ten. I got a star once. <laughs> oh, yes, words has always been my strong point. Oh, you leave it to me, Vicar. I want to do it. Oh, you can't do it. You, you have to do something else, won't you? <laughs> I want to do the article. You're not going to do the article. I'm the artistic one in this house. Cobblers. You can't even <laughs> spell. Who can't? You can't. I can spell better than you can. Who can? I can. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. All right, then. Spell chrysanthemum. C H R I S. C R 
Uh, 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 K H R. <laughs> well, not exactly. I use a word like chrysanthemum in an article about rag and boning, am I? That's where you're wrong, cos that's the name of Charlie Harris's horse, chrysanthemum. I don't care. I won't mention him. You can't write an article on rag and boning without mentioning Charlie Harris. He'd be furious. His family's been in the business even longer than ours. Then I shall say Charlie Harris and his horse. Because you can't spell chrysanthemum. I can look it up in my dictionary. How can you look it up and you can't spell it? I'll get someone else to spell it for me, then I shall look it up. How do you spell malleable? I'm not interested in spelling malleable. That's bottles for Ari's horse. I'll give a toss whose horse it is. Yeah. How many horses and carts followed Arthur Philpott's coffin in 1928? 23. 36. You don't know nothing. You can't spell. You're not competent. I've been a rag and bone man all my life. For so long. I was a rag and bone man Vince, before you was born. Must have been a rag and bone man after your death. How do you know? I'll kill you if you don't sell it. <laughs> Why don't you both write it? Why don't you mind your own quick? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I forgot she was there. Oh, it's, 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 it won't work. I mean, I, I can't collaborate with him. I mean, how can one undertake work of, of, of a creative nature who, with someone who gets on your threatening bits as much as he does? <laughs> well, this calls for the judgment of Solomon. You gotta chop him in off. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you toss for it? You call, Mr. Septo. Heads. Tails. You lost. You lost. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. Yeah! <laughs> you big soft Nelly, what are you? <laughs> you want to get back to your cock, mate? <laughs> I'm doing it. Uh, don't get upset, Mr. Stepto. We'd still like a contribution from you. Would you? Of course. Anything? Of course, anything you like. Right, you're on. <laughs> I'll go and do it now. Uh, good night, Mr. Stepto. And thank you for the drop of the... Uh, Gold watch. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, I beg your pardon. I was composing. Uh, allow, allow me to see you out. Thank you very much. May I illustrate my article with, with uh, photographs? Oh, yes, yes, that would be delightful. Well, you karate with me, don't you? I'm so <laughs> excited. Oh, I don't wish to you. I'm, I'm sure you're going to be most pleased with it. I shall indeed. Here I... uh, my, my teacher, she was uh, always complimenting me on my literary effort. I, I was thinking of taking up journalism when I left school. But old misery guts there wouldn't let me. They won't let me do anything. Uh, well, uh, good night, Mr. Stepto. I shall look forward to reading your article. All right, okay. <coughs> good night, Mr. Stepto. Oh, uh, yes. Pity the poor sailors and fishermen. Are they still out there? <laughs> uh, good night, Mr. Stepto. <laughs> this could be the start of a new career. <laughs> Stupid place to put an R. <laughs> well, I don't just have A, B, C or anything else. I have the best sense of stupid. Hey, what's all this rubbish? Oh, that, that is my research. Uh, reference books, uh, taped interviews and photographs. I have photographed and interviewed every totter within two miles. I don't mess about. When I do a thing, I do it properly. How much have you written? Mind your own business. You haven't started, have you? Having a bit of a struggle, are you? Don't you worry, it's all up here, mate. I know exactly what I'm going to write. It's just a question of getting it down, that's all. Flo Bear had much the same trouble. He said that every word was like tearing the flesh from his body. Mm. You go away and do yours, go on. I've done it. You've done it? Last week. What have you done? Mind your own business. Well, it can't be much good if you've done it that quickly. It's probably extremely facile. Great works always takes a long time. 
A Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Steptoe. It'll be 110 by the time you've finished. <laughs> a pale, wintry sun shone down out of an opalescent sky as a tired old cart horse. Yeah, well, in, in 1926, during the general strike, under my dad's yeah. leadership, we all That's Charlie the Harris. A feed the general marches en route, so to speak. Bleeding liar. Well, turn that thing off. Well, he's telling lies. I tried to organise that. He wouldn't give you the drippings off his nose. <laughs> what else did he tell you? Oh, he gave me some marvellous material. It was wonderful, a human interest. All about how, when he got married, Charlie had nowhere to live. So he sent his dad to the pictures. And when he got back, his dad found that Charlie had put all his furniture out on a curb. The door was locked, and Charlie made his old dad go and live in the stable. Well, that's not true either. That was me and your grandfather. He's trying to get the credit for everything. He, he, that article is going to be a tissue of lies. All right then, all right then. I shall interview you and get to your side of it. Uh, 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 say, say something uh, into that. Just so as I get a level. What did I say? Uh, anything. Uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Sausages, eggs and bacon. Sausages? Yeah. You said there weren't any sausages. <laughs> well, there weren't when I'd ate him. It was only six anyway. Six? <laughs> I could have had three of them. I'm the one who does the work here. I've been talking like with somebody inside of me the other morning. You greedy, gutted out. are you going to interview me or aren't you? I can't sit here all night arguing the toss with you. My time's valuable. <laughs> I'm cooking a breakfast tomorrow morning, right? A testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> His fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that's all right. Uh, uh, a Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Steptoe. Interview a number 26er, Albert Steptoe. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steptoe, um, what are your earliest recollections of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush? I'm not telling you. <laughs> what is the point of having an interview if, if, if you aren't going to say anything? I ain't writing your article for you. I'm not asking you to. I can't blind me. I mean, Boswell could hardly have written his life of Dr. Johnson if every time Boswell asked Johnson a question, Johnson said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> now then, we'll start again. You're just trying to pick my brains. I shall pick them straight out of your ears in a minute. <laughs> now then. Oh, Mr. Steptoe, in your 70 years as a rack and bone man, you must have noticed many changes. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> well, what? What are they? Oh. oh, we used to have trams in them days. Yes. And we haven't got them now. <laughs> you try to take the slash. Oh. Now stop mucking about. Uh, it must have been very difficult driving an horse and a cart in those days. Oh, yes. Dangerous, too. I remember once I had a heavy load and I got me wheels caught in the tram lines at Marble Arch and I had to go the whole way to Putney Depot before I could turn round. Could not they have stuck a number six up the horse's backside, twisted the points and sent you all the way back to Shepherd's Bush? Are you calling me a liar? Yes! And if you don't take this seriously, I shall switch this machine off and fetch you a knuckle sandwich straight up the Utah, all right? <laughs> uh, tell me, Mr Steptoe, Bearing in mind that this is for a church magazine, consequently we don't want any filth, I realise that is placing you under an unfair handicap. Uh, can you recollect any interesting incidents in your long and varied career as a rag and bone man? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was seven, my dad brought me home in pigeon. Oh. That is nice. And then when it was hard up, I had to bring it down the market and flog it for a tanner. Oh, 
That is very sad. I flogged that pigeon 523 times before we was tambourine. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. Have you got any more like that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember another time during the Depression when I was totting down the Gold Old Road and an old biddy came out of our house and she said, Hey, come over here. And I said, I just finished reading your article, Mr. Septo, and it really is first class. Absolutely fascinating, just what we wanted. No, no, I, I don't intend cutting it at all. I don't pretend to understand all the colloquialisms, but I'm sure the parishioners will. Yes, we're going to press today 5,000 copies. <laughs> Is that the parish magazine? It is. Are our bits in? They are. Oh, give us a look. I've been trying to get one everywhere. So have lots of people. Oh, sold out, are they? No. They've been impounded by the police. <laughs> <laughs> After the first hour, at the first 500 copies being distributed, the vicarage was raided. <laughs> and the vicar was arrested on a charge of publishing obscene material likely to corrupt public morals. I take it uh, your contribution was the crossword puzzle? That's right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it? No. Not until they filled it in. <laughs> filth, filth, filth. Right the way through. From one across to 38 down, a concentrated <laughs> square of obscenity, of filth, and hardcore pornography. Oh, it's not bad. It's not, not worse than me Scrabble games. <laughs> Three old ladies had to be treated for shock down by Darby and Jones. <laughs> well, if they didn't know the words, how did they fill them in? I know some of you will get filled in. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. The vicar didn't say nothing. No, of course he didn't. Poor old devil. He didn't understand the clues, let alone the answers. <laughs> Thank you very much again. At seven nights, hard graft on my part. Now going up in smoke from the incinerator down the local nick. There, you got your article in. What's the matter with you? Yes, sir, I have. And may I add, for this, along with several other copies that managed to elude the police dragnet, and now changing ends at twice the price of a school kids edition of Oz. <laughs> I shall go to my room. <laughs> I've uh, just got three things to say to you. What's that? Six across, 13 across, <laughs> and 28 down. <laughs> Don't you dare you thank me for you're 14 across. I will not be spoken to you like that. I'm your father. Not according to 16 down. <laughs> you filthy foul mouths. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
five, five pounds. Another five million sack like that, we can retire. Come here, fancy, Santa France. Good afternoon, Father. What's good about it? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You cannot beat the joys of living at home. That cheerful welcome at the gate. That sunny smile of pleasure with his kindly old face like <laughs> that the joy of seeing his son again. Yeah. <laughs> the warm glow of a roaring fire in the grate. <laughs> <laughs> the delicious smell of dinner wafting in from the kitchen and disappearing at one's hotel. Lance, warming one into a head of euphoric trance of mouth-watering anticipation. <laughs> ah, just like a pistol, kid. kids. <laughs> ah, ah, and what have we got? Tin of sardines. <laughs> Thank you, my galloping gourmet. I thought you were supposed to be making steak kidney pudding today. I, I didn't have time. Maybe you'd have time, you'd all day. I've been all day out in the yard. Locked in that bleeding wardrobe. <laughs> Pray, what were you doing in the wardrobe? I was woodworming it. I see. <laughs> and how was you doing that? Was you crawling down the aisles and hitting them on the head with little lemons? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. I bought myself a tin of that stuff in there out of my own money. I was in there painting it on and somebody locked the door. I know who it was! Who? Superworm! The king of the woodwork! <laughs> With one mighty flick of his tail, the door was shut. Look out! Yeah. And clamped with his steel like choppers on the key. He spun in the air like a cavalry wheel. What a dog! Incarcerating his mortal enemy in a living tomb. How would you like a tin of sardines round your ear, old? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get that down, yeah. Oh, look. No. I couldn't. I couldn't eat another mouthful. I'm full up. I had a bag of crisps for me lunch. <laughs> you want them, don't you? No, I don't. All right, then. Mm. I shall jump into my auto and go down to the Indian restaurant for a tandoori special. What have you got in the sack? Ah, uh, the usual stuff. Got some cream and some dark, mixed rags. A couple of dresses, some blouses, some hats there. Got them off a bird whose granny died. I'll sort them out. Hello? Inland revenue. Mr. I stepped out. <laughs> Personal. I'm inland revenue on with you. You haven't paid any tax in years. You told him you didn't want to join, didn't you? And show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. What's the matter? Yes, sir. One of our inspectors will be calling on you in regard to a discrepancy in your income tax return. The queries in respect to the allowance claimed for your wife. We should be grateful if you... <laughs> <laughs> what, wife? I've been claiming for your mother. She's been dead for 33 years. <laughs> I know. I never told them. Have you been climbing for all that time? Yeah, well, you say 40 quid a year. I put her down first time by mistake and they didn't say nothing. I've put her down every time since. Harold, what will they do? Well, you first start. <laughs> well, this is a very serious offence, Dad. I mean, look, this is deliberate fraud. They can fine you up to ten times the amount you've fiddled out of them. I don't have that sort of money. But it's up to two years inside. Prison? Well, she'd hardly think it would be a nudist colony. <laughs> I can't do porridge with my time of life, Harold. I'd never come out. I could never be that lucky. <laughs> you are fortunate you're living in this country, mate. In Saudi Arabia, they'd chop your hands off. <laughs> in the Sudan, they'd chop your watches off. <laughs> or both. <laughs> oh, well, you'll just have to send your medals back and resign from the British Legion. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Well, what a stupid things to do. You great pudding. You never get away with defrauding the income tax. They always catches you in the end, like the Mounties. They got nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harold. I'll never do it again. What am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. You could plead insanity. <laughs> hey, that's it. You never accepted your wife's death. 
You, you, you still think she's alive? You still talk to her? You, you, you lay her place at the dinner table? You even buy her birthday cards on her birthday? They put me in a nut house! <laughs> well, it's up to you. It's so over two years inside, the rest of your life in the nut house. God, I don't know what to do. When's he coming? It's not noon. What time? Half past four. What time's it now? Half past four. Ah! Oh, Harold, don't let them take me away. Please, Harold, don't let them take me away. Don't let them take me away. Don't let them take me away. Go. You try and look honest. Oh, go. 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 Play the old soldier. Go and get your medals on. Where's that photograph of Teddy? You smashed it. Well, where's that one of the Queen? Go and put her up. Hey, good afternoon. Afternoon. My name's Greenwood, the Inland Revenue. Yes, sir, you, you must be the gentleman they wrote to my father about. That's right. Are your parents in? My, my, my father's in. He's wa waiting for you. And your mother? She's waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's to say that uh, she's expecting him any time now. She's not here. She's sleeping. Oh, would it be inconvenient to wake her up? Well, not so much inconvenient as uh, difficult. <laughs> She's, uh... Yes, it's all right. Uh, I expect your father to be able to answer all the questions I have in mind. Well, won't you come in? Thank oh, you. Please, I, I do think I should warn you that uh, he's getting on a bit, you know. His mind isn't what it was. I mean, he, he sort of uh, rambles a bit. He's a bit vague. He, he tends to fantasise his things. I wouldn't put too much credence on what he says. <laughs> He's a bit senile. <laughs> you know, it's quite straightforward. You know, it was a 1480 more that did it, you know. He never came out of it the way he went in. I was intact, physically, of course, except for his teeth. <laughs> but mentally, it's, it's been a great struggle to us all. Yes, well, I'm terribly sorry. Did he get a disability pension? Because he's never entered it in his tax returns. No, 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 he didn't. You know, it was very hard in them days. But if you came out in one piece, that's all they worried about. <laughs> <laughs> he's got medals. Yeah. For king and country, it says. A lot of good they done him. Yeah, it's very, very sad. Uh, but you'll find government departments these days much more humane, much more understanding. Oh, that is good news. He's inside here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, Father, this is uh, Mr. Greenwood from the Inland Revenue. Good afternoon, Mr. Sitter. How do you do, sir? <laughs> At ease, Father. <laughs> Mr. Greenwood is going to ask you some questions. I'll be as brief as I can. I'm sure we'll be able to clear it up in no time. What's you sit down? Yeah, well, thank you. Yes, I will. Sit down, Father. <laughs> Mark, it's your drink. Oh, thank you. Yes, a cup of tea would be nice. Oh, cup now. So something a, a little stronger in this cold weather. Well, that's very kind of you, if you're having one. Yes, yes, we will join. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, the old pipsqueak and Wilfred, I see. <laughs> Soda? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, yes. You're very good health. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, not often that I can afford the luxury of spirits on my income. <laughs> oh, of course, neither can we. Uh, this is, in fact, what is left of a present we had from someone in the trade. Oh, yes, yes. Well, now, let's get down uh, to the point. Excuse me. Yeah? Our dinner. Never mind, Father. It's Friday tomorrow. We'll have a bit of meat. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Uh, yes, uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> now, the point in question, Mr. Steptoe, is the allowances that you claim for your wife. Cheers. Oh, uh, cheers, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he used to give us this when we was going over the top. 
tanked us right up, they did. Had to, otherwise he never would have been able to face it. My old platoon was wiped out before it got ten yards. Uh, uh, shocking, oh. shocking. Now, about your wife... Butchers, our generals were. The Germans were crying into their machine guns as they was wiping us out. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, now, here, for instance, you claim the full marriage allowance. And cheers! Uh, <laughs> lions led by donkeys we were. Oh, I wouldn't like to have to go through all that again. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's hope no one ever has to, huh? I'll drink to that. Yes. Peace and prosperity to us all. Peace and prosperity to us all, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> now, uh, you were married in 1918. That's right. I was home on leave. Blighty wound. Got a bit of shrapnel up me, Harris. <laughs> Painful. <laughs> He's never been the same man since. Oh. <laughs> and you've uh, claimed the marriage allowance ever since? Yes, well, I can explain that. Yeah? Uh, I used to have blackouts. Didn't know what I was doing. Oh. Cheers! Uh, oh, uh, cheers, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, um, <laughs> uh, when uh, was your wife born, Mr. Sertip? Mr. Sertip. 1901. Yeah, exactly, 1901. That's what we have here. So that should mean that she'd be 71 years old. Now, uh, she, she's been an old age pensioner for six years. Uh, yeah, and well... yet, you have never declared her pension in your income tax returns. Now, that's a very serious omission. Well, hang on a minute. A uh, chair. Huh? <laughs> The law says that every source of income must be declared on those returns without exception. And that's, 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 that's very, very remiss of you. Very naughty. I've never drawn my pension. You've not drawn your pension? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, dear. I mean, we can't have that, you know. Why ever not? It's hard enough for the old folk to manage as it is. Mrs. Steptoe must have her pension. I speak to the Ministry of Security and Social Health about it. <laughs> I know what it is. Hey, old people, you know, you're so proud. It's so silly. <laughs> I mean, sardines for lunch. Oh, no, 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 no. Your mother is entitled to her pension. The wife of an old soldier is a disgrace. I'll personally see that she gets every penny that she's entitled to. And I'll see that she gets it retro retrospectable. Retrospectively. Thank you. Cheers. By Jove, yes. <laughs> now, let me see. Uh, six years at um, oh, it must be hundreds of pounds. How much? Uh, over a thousand, I should think. Yeah, and. <laughs> You know they can afford it. Just look at the surplus they've got. Hundreds of millions. Now, what's the point of having such a big surplus if some poor little old lady can't get her pension, you know? They'll only go and spend it on the Concord or some other daft bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't find No, 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 not another word. I shall speak to the Ministry myself, and tomorrow morning there'll be a man round here to see Mrs. Steptoe. Oh, uh, 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 she'll be able to use the money to, to get herself a decent home. Old people shouldn't have to live in a place like this, you know. Uh, you just leave everything to me, and I shall... <laughs> now I'll bid you a good day. Sir, I salute you, and please tell Mrs. Steptoe not to worry about a thing, huh? Good day to you, huh? <laughs> I, I shall not cease from mental strife, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand. <laughs> Till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and I used to see the alto part of that match. Mind where you're putting your feet, oh, the no. horse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, have you got far to go? No, no, it's all right. Now I've got my car outside. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
That's all right, isn't it? Thousand quid. No, it's not all right. That's compounding a felony, this is. You'll get five years now, double bubble. <laughs> yeah, go on, that's it. Get drunk. You might as well. It's the last chance you'll get. The only bars you was going to see in a place where you was going is across the windows. <laughs> I'm from the Ministry of Health and Social Security. I want to speak to Mrs. Stepto. Yes, you better come in. Just oh, thank you. See, she. Is uh, Mrs. Stepto at home? Look, we can't let this go on any longer. I quite agree. It's a very lamentable oversight on our part. Still, never mind. I've got the cheque for the six years arrears. And if you wouldn't mind telling Mrs. Stepto I'm here, we'll get her to sign the appropriate forms, give her a pension book, and away she goes. Yeah, but well, <coughs> would you like a drink? Oh. <laughs> Got vodka? Thank you, no, I, I don't drink. Oh. Well, look, I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. I'm afraid that my mother... Oh, Harold! <laughs> I'm just going down to the shops. What would you like for your tea? Oh, you've got company. Mrs. Stepto. <laughs> yes? Uh, Mrs. Gladys Stepto. Uh, yes? <laughs> I can't apologise enough for, for, for this terrible mistake, but rest assured, we'll soon put it right. Look! Mother. <laughs> Why don't you go down to the shops and let me sort things out? Why don't you mind your own business? Uh, your mother knows what she's doing. <laughs> I don't know what she'll be doing if she gets caught. <laughs> but by my father, that is. You know he doesn't like you signing anything when he's not in the house? Go and get him. I can sign anything I like. I don't have to ask my husband's permission. Well, as you wish, if you just sign this here... <laughs> Gladys... Mary... Steptoe. <laughs> That's fine. Now, here is the cheque for £1,150 back pension. <laughs> and here is your new pension <laughs> starting this week. And long may you live to spend it. Oh, thanks ever so. Well, that's it then. I, uh, I won't uh, bother you any longer. Oh. I'm sorry to have missed Mr. Stepto. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now. Show your gratitude, Mummy. I mean, don't just shake hands. I think he deserves a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's not every day you get a cheque for £1,100. Come on. Give the gentleman a little kiss. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Very uh, unusual woman, your mother. You don't know how unusual. <laughs> she, she really seems to have something other women have. Yes. Well, goodbye. <laughs> take care of her. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of her, all right. <laughs> don't worry. I'll take care of her. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have a A lot of stupid things to do. What's the matter with you? But take that silly hat and a wig off. You look like old Mama Riley. <laughs> How long do you think you can keep up this ludicrous masquerade? As long as I have to. Shouldn't be difficult. All I have to do is to dress up once a week, go down and draw me pension, that's all. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this knicker elastic don't half cut into your legs. <laughs> You're not turning funny, are you? <laughs> what you got those things on for? What? I'm not going up the stairs on a bus without them, I'm telling you. You'll never get away with it. One of these days, you'll forget to put them on, and the conductor will catch you, and you'll both go inside. Thank <laughs> you. 
them for a chat round yeah, here, Al. That's what I like to talk like a bit of spirit. What's your name, darling? Mind your own business. Mm, Gladdy. Gladdy, oh, that's a nice name. I like that. Cheers, did you? I'm Norman. How do you do? <laughs> you do that again, Moose and I'll... You're what? I'll call a policeman. I'm a policeman. At least I was. I'm retired now. <laughs> oh, well, it's been very nice. Yeah, well, hang on, definitely. You haven't got your money yet. Only one in front of you. It won't be long. Yes, I was a son in the fraud squad. <laughs> yes, you'd be surprised at the swindles people get up to. Oh, but not what got past right. me, though. One, two, oh, no, three. I can tell the fiddle is a mile off. Relentless I was. Yeah. Never gave up. I got my teeth into a case, that was it. Thanks, I always got them in the end. Bye-bye. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want a word with you. <laughs> what are you doing this afternoon? Huh? <laughs> Going to come to pictures? Oh, no, I can't. I have to go home and get my son's dinner ready. Oh, he must be big enough to get his own. Get in for a bob, my treat, and if you're a very, very good girl, I might even give you a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Well, it's a good program. What are you doing after the orgy? Hi. <laughs> well, that's the title. That and uh, wife swapping, French style war. Oh no, I don't think I like that. I'm not that sound of girl. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me. Yes. Well, um, well I'll see you outside. Thank you. Yes. Thank I think he fancies me. An ex copper? Well, he could do a lot worse, Mother. <laughs> now, it's no joke, Harold. I think he wants to marry me. Well, I'm not surprised. You're a very attractive looking woman. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Fraud squad, he said he was. Yeah. If he picks me up in the, in the post office anymore, he, even he's liable to find out. Oh, what am I going to do, Harold? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to send that money back right now. Hey? Anonymously. How about the pension I have to collect it every week? Not if you write what I tell you. Now, come on, write. Uh, dear Mr. Greenwood, as we regret, I have to inform you... Yeah, I'll... Ah! 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 Dear Mr. Stepto, I was very sad indeed to hear of the tragic death of your wife. This is how you do work, we're in the clear. There's more. However, before we close her file, there is the question of death duties to clear up. I assume she will have left her estates to be shared between you, your son and your daughter, in which... What daughter? <laughs> Muriel. <laughs> who, does, who is Muriel? <laughs> My daughter, the one I've been climbing for, she's 35. <laughs> well, you can't climb for a daughter of 35. She works for me. Miss Secretary, I've been giving her 12 quid a week. I give up! <laughs> I'll get you out of 
one out and you're gonna dig yourself another one. It's only a formality. Mr. Greenwood says all he wants is her, her signature. And he says that in order to save time, he will come round here and see Muriel personally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> no, wait, no, 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 no. Now, it'll only be the ones on Saturday next week. No! I mean it. I'm not doing it under no circumstances. I've finished. This time, you go to the Nick. And it won't be Holloway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Greenwood. Do come in. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. I am so very sorry about your dear wife. It was a great shock to us all. She didn't suffer. Oh, good, good. Uh, well, this won't take long. Ah, you. Thank you. <clears throat> You'd like a drink? Uh, no, uh, no, no, I don't think I'd ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get your three signatures and I'll be off. Well, Harold's out on the round, but Muriel's here. I'll call her. Muriel! Children must be a great comfort to a man at a time like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's a good girl. <laughs> you called for her. <laughs> Muriel? This is Mr. Greenwood from the, uh, from the Inland Revenue. I'm with you. You're <laughs> Um, may I offer my condolences, Miss Steptoe? I almost feel I knew your mother personally. Oh, there, there, there. there. <laughs> Take courage, my dear. Now, don't give way, my dear. Don't give way. Just come and sit here. That's right. Just have your signature, eh? No, 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 don't be frightened, dear. Don't be frightened. Well, now. if you'll excuse me, I'll leave you two together. I'll just pop out and see what's happened to Harold. No, no! <laughs> no, just your signature, if you don't mind. That's right. Hotel Miramar, Puerto de Vallata, Mallorca. 
That's for the whole of the Christmas period, returning to the UK January the 3rd. Now, good, good. Now, I see there's a golf course attached. Is that a separate charge? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Uh, but you can pay here, you know, save spending the old pesetas. <laughs> the dustbins are in the alleyway, right? <laughs> This hotel, it's all right, is it? I mean, there's an awful lot of riff <laughs> Working class go to New Yorker these days, huh? Oh, not the, not to, to the Hotel Mirabar, sir. No, I assure you. Oh, no. I mean, 32 acres in its own ground, own swimming pool, own beach. Oh, no, you'll be well away from them. And they have guard dogs as well. <laughs> well, that's all right, then, huh? I see they have a beauty salon and a hairdresser's. Oh, yes, yes. First class international standard. Is there a sauna? Oh, yes. I think you'll find they have everything there that you have in Epsom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I don't excuse me. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> you think they'd be used to that living in Epsom, wouldn't you? <laughs> Look, what do you want? I want a bit of what they want. A little bit of service. I'm going on holiday, ain't I? You don't remember me, do you? Should I? You should. You took my bleeding deposit quick enough. <laughs> you put me in. Uh, Steptoe. I've come to pay off the balance. Steptoe. Harold. Excuse me. Yes. I've got my horse and cart on a meter outside. <laughs> Could you get a wiggle on, please? Step <laughs> uh, step toe. Oh, yes. Yes, step toe. Oh, dear. <laughs> Is this right, Hotel Mirabar? Yeah, that's right. Hotel Mirabar, Puerta de Volata. Uh, double room with bath and balcony. Ten days, including Christmas. <sighs> yes, that's quite right. Uh, unfortunately, there has been a slight change of plan. Oh, you can't go. You want to cancel. No. Well, that's perfectly all right, sir. No, no, you... no. I shall be going, but unfortunately, I shall be going on my own. But you will notice that I had originally booked for a young lady friend and myself. Yes. Well, regretfully, I found out this morning that the said young lady in question has decided to give me the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I shall keep the same room. <laughs> no doubt I shall pick up something out there. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Eh? Did I hear you say you'll be staying at the Hotel Miramar, Puerto de Vallarta? Yes, that's right. Uh, are you kind there as well? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, that is marvellous. <laughs> uh, my name's uh, Stepta. <laughs> uh, I'm in room 23. What, what room are you in? 24. <laughs> it's good news. We'll be able to have breakfast on the balcony together. Oh, well, no, I don't think I... I, I, I oh, just don't, don't worry. I do wear pyjamas <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> I do assure you. Everyone has to in these Spanish hotels. You never know when they're going to fall down, do you? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't do it to be dug out of the rubble in the nudie, would it? <laughs> Usted habla espanol? Uh, si, poco. Oh, moi. Oh, si. We're <laughs> taking lessons from the Shepherd's Bush Adult First Education Institute. <laughs> I's excellent teacher. Uh, he's Pakistani. <laughs> ain't too hot. But he's Spanish. He's muy excelente. Uh, he was first rowed ashore in Barcelona. <laughs> I think that explains it. He thought he was in Dungeness, the poor thing. <laughs> I really must pay my bill. I mean, I don't like to keep the horse waiting unless she gets a bit impatient. They wouldn't do it to have her kick some parking warden out of the black hole of Calcutta, would it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. How much do I owe you, please? That's uh, £98 to pay. Oh, very reasonable. This is going to be the best Christmas I've ever spent. Especially, now, I'm, I'm going to be amongst friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Must apologise for the condition they're in. <laughs> I've passed through some very mucky ends in my business. I mean, not, not everyone's as particular as what I am. I'm sure. Well, what would you, would you do, please? my lunch. <laughs> if I take these home, the old man will go putty. Look, bang them in the waste paper basket for me, will you? Unless, of course, you would care to partake. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Polish sausage. It's a bit chewy, but very nourishing. Thank you, no. <clears throat> One too many. Oh, no, no. You keep that. You've been most helpful, Squire. You're most kind. Your tickets. Thank you. Well, I shall bid you adios, mon braves. <laughs> oh, I shall look forward to seeing you in Puerto de Palerta. Yeah, perhaps we might meet on the plane. Yeah, I shall save you a couple of seats. Go <laughs> on, have them for your tea. It's a pity to waste them. Seems to be proud. Uh, I shall look forward to the honour of having a knees up with you on Christmas Day. We shall be Spaniards out of dance, won't we? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> Uh, oh, via con di Oh, shut up, you patient, ugly, gutting pillar! <laughs> We've changed our minds. I think we'll go to Bournemouth instead. <laughs> I can't say I blame you. Enoch dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> Just like the ones he used to know. <laughs> Can't you do it? Well, Christmas than I have to hold.
bleeding sight better than they are now. <laughs> Do you remember your first Christmas? 1932. Harold was only six months old then. Yeah, I gave you to him. Do you remember he kept gurgling and pointing up at you? So I lifted him up and he stretched out his chubby little fist, grabbed all of you and pulled your leg off. <laughs> We never did find that either. <laughs> I think he must have ate it. <laughs> We've watched him grow up together, you and me, haven't we? From that little baby boy into what he is now. A bleeding disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen a lot of Christmases stuck up there, haven't you? Good ones and bad ones. Do you remember 1936? That was the year his mother was took from us. Very sudden, that was, two days before Christmas. And I'd bought a Christmas present already, so that was wasting my time. <laughs> Miserable Christmases we've had since then. Miserable. Except 1940, that was a good one, except for the Blitz. And still, if it hadn't been for the Blitz, I wouldn't have had that ATS girl from the Ballads Balloon site billeted on me. <laughs> now, what was her name? Yeah. Annie McFadden. <laughs> you didn't see much of me that Christmas, did you? Of <laughs> course, she was a big girl, she was. <laughs> if they'd stuck her up on the end of a cable, she would have brought down half the Luftwaffe. <laughs> hey, do you remember we was nearly killed in the Blitz that Christmas, Harold and me? When she thought it was a bomb coming over and she threw herself on top of us. <laughs> yeah. If it hadn't been for the rationing, I would have married her. <laughs> Still, never mind. I still got Harold. He always spends Christmas with me. He's a good boy that way. I couldn't bear Christmas on my own. Not at my age. Yeah, I've a lot to be thankful for. Now, let's have a look at you. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> well, he'll be coming home in a minute. I'd better go and switch the yard light on. I was going to put it on the wall. Are you in pain? Of course I'm in pain. Wouldn't you be in pain with a bum full of perforations? Oh, never mind. You go into the house and I'll fill a basin full of hot water and put a sprig of mint in it and he can sit in it. Don't leave me alone. I've, uh, I've finished the decorations. They look very nice. I think you'd be pleased with them. I'll just said, I wanted to have a walk I with you. I haven't blown up the balloons. I'll leave that to you. I can't manage. My lungs <laughs> ain't what they used to be. I can't even inflate the little tits on the ends of the sausage ones. <laughs> we have to have balloons. I mean, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without balloons, would it? Look, Dad, there's something I want to tell. Here you are. What do you think? Oh, yes. Oh, very nice. They're, they're very colourful. Yeah. Dolly looks nice on top of the tree, don't she? Yes, yes, uh, she does. She's lasting well, isn't she? 41 years. Wouldn't be the same without her, would it? Uh, look, Dad, I, I want to have a word with you about Christmas. Oh, yeah, we've still got a lot to do. we better get organised. I haven't ordered the turkey. They're too dear yet. I thought I'd go down to the market on Christmas Eve and pick one up at the auction. Yeah, look, Dad, before you go on, I'll... <laughs> I, uh, I left the vegetables to you. I can't hunt them around, not with my back. You can put them on the cart. And I got a tin of biscuits and fruit I've ordered and um, a big box of dates, cos I know you like dates. And I, I've got the crackers already, look. Good ones, these. Good presents in them. Little whistles. And then things you... 
move about trying to get the balls into the little holes. You like them, don't you? You're always playing with them. <laughs> Please, now, the, sit down, I want one. The booze, I was thinking of we, what we've got there. And I thought we'd order a crate of light ale and a crate of brown ale and a crate of Tom Thumb, bottle of Tom Thumb, and a bottle of uh, gold watch and a bottle of virulin in case the vicar comes. Do you want some wine? Uh, that please. Because they're knocking that... off some Dago Red down at the supermarket. <laughs> 81p a litre. I don't know whether that's the cost or the effect it has on you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put the oven on and put the puddings in to boil. Can you smell them? Yes, yes, they smell wonderful. Yeah, they're nice and dark, they are. Black as a gorilla's ghoulies. <laughs> <laughs> and I put a, a half a quid's worth of your sixpences in there. Make sure you get one this year. Now, the point is, you want mince pies? But Dad, I won't be here. Because if you do, I'm not going to bother with making them on Christmas Day. You'll have to tell me... What did you say? I said I won't be here. Of course you'll be here. It's Christmas. No. I'm going away this Christmas. Going away? Yes. Where? Puerto de Vallarta. Where the big nose that? Mallorca. <laughs> Mallorca. We don't want to go to Mallorca. I didn't say we. I said me. I'm going on my own. On, on your own? Yeah. Without me? Yeah. Without me? Without you. On your own? On my own. <laughs> I should have told you before, but I wasn't sure when I could raise sufficient conkers. Well, this morning, I managed to pay off the balance, so I'm off. Oh, I don't understand, Harold. You always spend Christmas with me here, just the two of us together. Oh, no. That's why I'm going to Mallorca on my own. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest, Dad. I cannot spend another Christmas Stuck in this rat hole with you. <laughs> over 40 years I've done it. Year after year after year. And if I asked to do another one, I shall go start raving bunkers. I thought you enjoyed it. How can you say that? We don't enjoy it. We never enjoy it. I enjoy it. it. Liar. You just enjoy seeing me being miserable. It's the same thing every year. We go through the same ritual every year. I sit in that chair for three solid days with a dark paper hat stuck on my head. <laughs> watching you sit in front of the goggle box. With walnut shells, tangerine skins, and fair gas piling up round your boots. <laughs> I swear blind, if it wasn't for the occasional calls of nature, you'd be buried alive by Boxing Day. <laughs> I mean, his, his soul is sort of dead. I, I just can't stand it any longer. I didn't realise you felt like that. Well, you should do. I'll tell you every year. <laughs> I mean, you don't listen, do you? Just sat there chomping on your nuts all day. <laughs> You don't hear anything, do you? It's not like that all day. What about the present giving? That's a nice part of the day. Yes, it is. I agree. It is. I agree. All of 30 seconds that takes up. <laughs> it's yours. Read mine. <laughs> Go on, open it, Harold. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, just what I wanted. Three handkerchiefs and a pair of white fronts. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> As I don't know. Cos that's what I always get. <laughs> I've had three handkerchiefs and a pair of white fronts for the past 25 years. You're getting very cynical, Harold. You never used to be like that. It's not the present, it's the thought that counts. Oh, yes, I know. Look, I'm not knocking the presents. It's just I've got to get away this year. I mean, God blimey, I spent 51 weeks of a year with you. Surely you don't begrudge me 10 days. Ten days? You're gone for ten days? <laughs> no much point going all that way just for Christmas dinner, is it? <laughs> so you've got yourself all sorted out, have you? Yeah. I suppose it's too much to expect that you'd thought of what I'm going to do. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, see? Because I got you all sorted out. That was the first thing I thought of. Yeah. I have had a word with the vicar. Oh, God. <laughs> now, he's throwing his old people's annual Christmas dinner down the church hall. And he says he will be delighted to see you there, providing... Providing what? Providing you do not get Brahms and List. <laughs> <laughs> you do not shock all those sweet old ladies with your dirty stories and your foul language. <laughs> I mean, the vicar ain't forgotten the way you done up his crossword puzzle. <laughs> he doesn't know what time of day it is, he doesn't. Some of them 
sweet old ladies worked down at the pickle factory in the fish market when they was girls. <laughs> I was four years in the trenches and I never heard words like they use. It's like a stoker's reunion down them whist <laughs> some nights. I don't be stubborn. He's booked your place. Now then, here's your ticket. Now this entitles you to a, a free course dinner, an apple, an orange and an ounce of tobacco. And you can see the conjurer afterwards. <laughs> Not going. The mayor's going to be there. Oh, how exciting. He'll turn up in his rolls. Hello, how are you? On to the next one before he gets an answer. Oh, that looks nice. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. He won't have any, though. He'll only stay long enough to have his footy in the local paper. Him and his missus carving the turkey. He cut one slice and then whoosh, off. You won't see his backside for dust. Oh, God, you talking about me being cynical. I mean, it won't be like that at all. You should be grateful. Go on. Take the ticket. You Go. Can keep the ticket. You stick it in the car seat <laughs> with the wrapping paper. And they can stuff their Christmas dinner. I ain't going. I've got my own home and my own food and, and my own son. I won't be here. And I won't be there. Why not? Because I won't. Oh, give me a reason. Give me all good reasons. No. Oh, give me one. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Because I've got one. Yes, I have. Then let's hear it! <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you. Who was that supposed to mean? Well, if you can't see, it's no use talking about it. But you can't just say that and finish the argument. All right, then. It's for old people, isn't it? People with nowhere to go, with no one to look after them. Well, they all know about you down there. They'll start asking questions. Hello, where's Harold? Oh, he's gone to Mallorca to enjoy himself and left you all alone, are you, poor old... Well, I'm not having that. I happen to be proud of you and I'm not having them talking like that about you. No, it'd be better if I just stay here by myself and then they won't know. You can't stay here by yourself. Well, no option, have I? Oh, don't you worry, I'll be all right. There'll be plenty to do. I'll go down to the cemetery and sit with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back. Have me a little bit of dinner, pull a cracker with myself, <laughs> put on a paper hat, and watch the telly. It'll only be for one day. I'll be in bed for the rest of the time. You make it very easy, don't you? <laughs> don't really matter. Probably be my last Christmas here anyway. <laughs> I've been saying that since 1955. <laughs> then you'll be able to go to Mallorca every year, won't you? Yeah, well, I ain't gone, and neither of you. Well, don't particularly want to stay here in another Christmas, not without your mother. I'm getting very tired these days. <laughs> I, I only keep going in order to look after you, and now you don't want me, I, I might just as well turn it in and go up and join her. <laughs> You're going to join her now. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Are oh, you stopping down here? You want to be getting on with your packing, won't you? You won't knock me under your feet. With a bit of luck, I won't even bother you this Christmas either. <laughs> oh, yeah. As you're not staying, you might as well have your Christmas present now. Merry Christmas, son. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Three handkerchiefs and a pair of white fronts. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> really? I haven't got yours yet. Well, if I'm still here in the morning, <laughs> you can give it to me then. Good night, son. Three. What's that? What? Dolls. Pills. Oh, just something the doctor gave me. What for? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, son.
house, and you, you mustn't stay in on my account. <laughs> That's all right. I never expected to go. Not really. I knew I wouldn't be going. When I booked it, when I chose the hotel, when I give him the money, when he'd give me the ticket, I knew I'd be staying. <laughs> it's all a game now, really. Uh, no, son, you go. I'll be all right. I'll manage. Uh, I wouldn't like to spoil your Christmas. Yeah, it's all. I'm stopping it. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not stopping here just with you. I... I'm gonna cash in my ticket. I'm gonna blow it on the biggest party that's ever been seen in this house. <laughs> I'm gonna invite everybody, all my friends, all of the neighbours, just so long as we don't have to be alone. Yes, my <laughs> and I understand. <laughs> I think I'd better go and see how them puddings is getting along. <laughs> Now, with British Airways, take an earth shrinker to any part of the world. <laughs> uh, if my world shrinks anymore, I shall disappear up the back of these. <laughs> For a dozen people. That's just a sit down dinner, mate. Then there's the evening trade. There's another 20 coming in the evening. Then there's Boxing Day. There's another 40 coming down after the Skinner's Arms closed. This is going to be a three day fresh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got two dozen loaves coming, a gross of sausage rolls, 14 jars of pickles, and a 28 pound wheel of cheddar. And a new set of rods for the drains. Oh. <laughs> you never stand up to that sort of traffic. Ah, oh, don't you worry, mate. I've thought about that. That's why I invited Basil from the caravan site. He's going to set up two kamikazes in the yard. <laughs> with a canvas windbreak around them. You don't need them, all right. <laughs> you know, Dad, this is the first Christmas here I've ever really looked forward to. I've got a good time this year. Well, I'm not. Don't like having the house full of people. Well, let's spend it together on our own. You don't have to stay here. I told you, if you won't go down the old people's home, I'm quite prepared to set you up a nice little table, all of your own, out in the yard. <laughs> I'll send you dinner out there. You're going to sit in this table pulling crackers with the horse. It's <laughs> not that like in a funny paper hat, you Yeah, know. waste of money. Well, well, it's my money. It's my holiday money. I ain't going to cost you a tosheroon. If I was to invite my friends, that is entirely up to me. Exactly. Your friends. None of mine's is coming. Well, you ain't got any, have you? All of my friends was killed in the trenches. Yeah. <laughs> Going over the top so I won't get away from you. <laughs> yeah, that war's been over 55 years. You should have made some more friends since then. You will find as you go through life that you don't make many friends. Not real friends. Count yourself lucky if you get one or two. Oh. Then that's coming tomorrow night. They're not friends, mate. They're scroungers. They're only coming for a free meal and a booze up. That's not true. They are friends. Look, 55 cuts of it this morning. Exactly. Nothing until you invited them. Now, many of you had. Come on, how many? Yeah. Hey, 60, 70, 105? No. One. One. And who was that from? The Scrap Metal Association. The Scrap Metal. Haven't you had mine yet? No. I sent you one. Phew. I did. I won't forget to send you a Christmas card. Probably come two days after Christmas, like it did last year. <laughs> one of your old ones with the writing rubbed out. <laughs> I tell you, I sent one. That was a funny one. 
had a picture of the horse on the front, and when you opened it, a cut out of a great big pile of manure springs right out. <laughs> Very seasonal. That's got a lot to do with our Lord's birthday, hasn't it? Oh, well, if you're going to bring religion into Christmas. <laughs> I take it you will be wearing evidence at the Midnight Mass tonight? Might do. Rubbish. You ain't seen the inside of that church since 1940, when you fell through the roof with half underweight of lead stuffed up your shirt. <laughs> That's not true. I was fire-watching. You could have been shot for looting. I'll never forget the disgrace of that. At school, the headmaster pointed me out. There is the boy whose father has had to turn in his ARP helmet. <laughs> a rotten, sadistic swine he was. I'm sorry, Harold. I didn't know about that. Well, why do you think they chalked the swastikas on the front gate? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was because we was the only ones that weren't bombed out. People get very funny during wartime. Yeah, that daft, silly little moustache you used to wear didn't help. I had it before him. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here, there's, there's, there's one to both of us. Come on, you can have that one. Yeah, you put it with yours. Yeah. You got two now. One and a half. Well, when mine comes, you'll have two and a half. I'll stop moaning. You've never had so many before. Now, come on, let's sort out a seat in arrangements. Uh, there's uh, five birds coming to dinner. Which one do you want to sit next to? I don't care. All right, you're sat there. Mr. Albert Steptoe. Now, how about Miss Sheila Fegg on your right and Miss Elsie Harmer on your left? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'd send this it next to the horse. <laughs> well, very nice girls. I'm not going to get much grub sitting next to Elsie Harmer, am I? Blimey, she's bigger than that. Girl, ATS girl during the war. A 28-pound bird on the table and an 18-stone bird sitting next to me. <laughs> with carving with her around. Yeah, that's true. Do you remember the way she ripped that side of beef to pieces on Guy Fawkes night? <laughs> with her bare hands. <laughs> the life out of me. I thought you liked her. She fancies you, you know. Oh, girls. Oh, she does. She told me. She likes little blokes because they can't struggle so much. Get <laughs> <laughs> away from me. She can go there. Who else is coming? Uh, Joyce, uh, Beryl and Hermione. I love Joyce and Beryl. No, I love them. One, one. You don't want two. I told you, I'm going to enjoy this Christmas. I like to keep one in reserve, in case the other one flakes out. <laughs> uh, you, you can have Hermione, then, eh? And, and, and Sheila Fick. I don't know them. Well, they're all right, but you've got to be a bit careful. Keep your hands above the table. <laughs> Cos Chris and Arthur fancied him. Well, scrub out Chris and Arthur, then. I can't. They're bringing them. Oh, Lord, I can see me getting lumbered with gargantua. <laughs> Don't worry. If I see her carrying you upstairs, I shall blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> now, then, what else? <gasps> Did you remember to cut up the fruit for the punch? Yeah, it's in the punch bowl. Well, well go and bring it in. We'll make it tonight. We'll give it a chance to ferment. Right. What? This little lot will make their eyes water. If I don't enjoy myself this year, it won't be through one to try. What's it? <laughs> I told you to buy a punch bowl. I waste the money when we had this. It's big enough. <laughs> I am not making my fruit sangria in a pole. <laughs> it's never been used. Whether it's been used or not. Well, I do, actually. <laughs> That's beside the point. I mean, it is the principle of the thing. I mean, it's going to look very choice ladling the stuff out of there, isn't it? <laughs> Hermione won't reckon it for a start. She's a young conservative. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Well, they do. They don't normally serve their punch out of a china pole. <laughs> <laughs> they use this silver or glass. Oh, I don't think we have a glass pole. <laughs> a glass punch pole? No, haven't got one. Here. You could chirp the goldfish out of his bowl and put it in there. 
Where are we going to put him? Bring him in there. You are not banging my goldfish in there. <laughs> Charlie likes to see where he's going. <laughs> well, God blimey, he don't have much of a life as it is. He likes to have a look out now and again. <laughs> he can look up, can't he? For three days, he'll get a stiff neck. <laughs> Honestly, you know nothing about piscatorial anatomy, do you? Well, it's up to you. You pay your money and you take your choice. Uh, well, I suppose I could tell him it's an imported novelty from Howard's. Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah, come on, bang the booze in. All right, I'll take a chance. That's not very much. I ain't finished yet. A little gin. <laughs> a soup song of grape brandy. <laughs> Just a hint of vodka. You're evil. Oh, you're evil. <laughs> a fret of whiskey. <laughs> Let me squash. <laughs> Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's it all right. <laughs> a bowlful of that in the reservoir, <laughs> and we could paralyze the whole of South London. <laughs> right on tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You get the bird stuffed and put one in the oven. <laughs> before you say anything vulgar, I'm referring to the dinner. <laughs> Do the goose first. <laughs> It'll take the longest. <laughs> and I'll leave your rubber glove in it like you did last time. <laughs> and you. <laughs> So, Dad, with love. No! <laughs> to Dad, uh, wishing you a Merry Christmas and many of them. No! <laughs> <laughs> to Dad. From Harold. <laughs> oh, what a glorious smell. Oh, Bisto. Come on, Dad. It's Christmas morning. Chicka bell, chicka bell, chicka bell. Do I? Come on. Stop sticking in that pit. We've got work to do. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Well, might as well start as we need to go on. <laughs> so, well, we have to be here soon. Good morning, Father. And a very Merry Christmas to you. I would like to say that I'm sorry for all the rotten, vicious, nasty things what I've said to you in, in the past year. What's your game? What's all that on your face? It's all up my legs as well, all up my arms and across my belly and right round me... What is it? <laughs> I think I've got chicken pox. Chicken pox? You can't have... You can't have chicken pox. It can't be chicken pox. 
Chicken pox. C. C A A. Cholera. Catalepsy. <coughs> Chicken pox. The patient is flushed with vesicles all over his and his body temperature. He's got spots underneath his neck. <laughs> You've got chicken pox. <laughs> you can't have chicken pox at your age. I've never had it before. Why not, you silly great? <laughs> you can't have chicken pox. We're having a party. <laughs> it can't be chicken pox. And everyone's had chicken pox. You haven't. <laughs> I must have done. I mean, surely. Well, when I was little. I mean, nobody could get chicken pox at our age. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. We've got people coming. You have to go out in the stable and stay there. If the horse catches it, well, it's hard luck. You, you have to stay there. I, I, won't, I won't mention it. I, I won't talk about it to anyone. I won't say a word. Yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, you, you, you've gone away. You can't stay in here. You're contagious. Get out. I'll, I'll put on my belly half element and a pair of gloves and I'll cover my face over with flour. You're giving me now. into the stables. I'm not spending Christmas in a stable. Jesus did. No, his dad didn't have chicken pox, did he? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. There he is. Hey, what are you doing down there? Come on, Harold. Open up. Um, but we've got a slight problem. Hello. <laughs> he started playing games already. <laughs> no, this is going to be good. <laughs> Come on, Harold. Open up. I've got something. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's been a slight technical hitch. Uh, how many of you have had chicken pop? Chicken, chicken what? Chicken what? Uh, we, we got chicken pop. We thought you had turkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. We got chicken pox. No more dead. <laughs> All right, then. Well, who's had chicken pox? Who's had? Have you had it? I think so. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. I'll have to ask my mum. Well, if you had it, I think it's all right for you to come in. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going in there. You can't have a spot. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, what are we going to do then? I can't hear you. I'll come out. It's all right. Don't worry. We'll be all right. Here. I know what. Let's go round my mum. She won't mind. Oh, oh that's all right. Right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ha, ha, ha. 